We're seeing men, young men who are in their early 20s and late teens with lower and lower testosterone than their grandfathers. Reversing back to that one moment that is important for all of us where we finally decide that we're gonna see somebody and say, this is ridiculous, I should already be doing better and I tried so many things and it's been some time and I'm a good guy and I wanna get better, I'm ready. But if someone comes in and their symptom is, hey, I have a headache every week, I'm missing work, I'm fatigued, I haven't had sex with my significant other for X amount of months or years, um, I'm concerned about losing my job, I'm concerned about my relationship, I'm super stressed, please help me, this is my budget, we can, you can still get help. Today we're gonna talk about how to increase testosterone naturally and I believe this topic is very important because there are many people who struggle, who suffer and they have a feeling like sometimes they're really chasing the symptoms instead of finding the reason why they have the symptoms, instead of finding the root cause. And I think that's a problem. So today we're gonna be sharing some information. We're gonna be sharing what works for others. So whether you're a provider or an individual, you're gonna be able to process the information and maybe that's gonna help you in your own decision-making process. Disclaimer here, we are not treating any disease. We are not telling you what to do. You need proper evaluation. You need doctor's guidance and uh, even though you do need that, I think information is still very, very valuable. So before I introduce our guest, I wanted to let you know why we are here. There are many people who go from doctor to doctor, follow recommendations, and a lot of times they still don't feel better. And I feel this is a big problem. And I really believe that integrative medicine is the answer. So we formed a group called Polish Your Life where we have an integrative healthcare community. We bring these providers, these best people that we can find for you and for themselves so they can meet, collaborate, share resources to give the best clinical outcomes as fast as possible. So when you're watching this video, I'm sure you may have some questions. Comment below if you have questions, like the video if you really like it. And if you are watching on YouTube, I would like to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel follow us on social media platforms at Polish Your Life because we are truly here for you. So who is with us today? I'm super happy to introduce to you a naturopathic doctor who is uh, very passionate about hormone optimization and how important is hormone optimization where hormones play such an important role in so many different processes in our body. So he is uh, passionate about this. He is very experienced, treated thousands of people he is uh, the founder of Apollo Health Clinic with uh, the physical location in Montana. He is also with physical and uh, virtual presence in Seattle, uh, Washington. This is an amazing doctor that you definitely want to connect with, Dr. Sam Madeira. Welcome to Polish Your Life. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to chatting with you today. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start with where people are usually. So I think imagining somebody being frustrated going from doctor to doctor and maybe low testosterone increasing testosterone this is like on their radar as number one topic and i know it's a problem usually not for an individual but also for a family because our health in includes and involves people around us so i would like to ask you about your evaluation process and also your evaluation what's important to really find the root cause. So you meet the, first, uh, the, the person for the first time, what questions would you ask them and what is important? Yeah, that's a, a great starting point. We always wanna start with a, a thorough analysis and diagnostics. So uh, typically it starts with uh, kind of typical uh, questionnaires or intake forms, but uh, I would say what's different at my clinic is those, um, questionnaires are geared more towards their hormones and environmental toxin exposure um, potential. So uh, in particular, if we're talking about like men's hormones, some key questions uh, we would ask is, you know, how's your, how's your sexual health as far as your uh, libido, um, your daytime energy, waking energy? Um, do you have enough energy to do daily activities and exercise? Um, when do you feel fatigued, if you're tired, what time of day? Also, you know, are you waking up with morning erections when you, you know, 
for men, do you get erections? Um, and are they as firm as they used to be when you're younger? So if somebody's, you know, 45 or, you know, 35 to 55 is typically the age group for men and women that I work with, just so the listeners know. Um, and typically, uh, low testosterone is a lot younger than people think today. So, um, you know, probably the average age that I see is around 38, um, to 42 is kind of the average age. So 40, uh, of men and women coming into the clinic with low hormone symptoms. I mean, the most common symptom is always fatigue typically, uh, for chronic illness, but fatigue is a very vague symptom. You know, what does that mean? Do, do you have brain fog? Um, do they have low motivation for their work or do they have low sexual drive, but they're very motivated in their career still and all their energies dumped into their career, right? So um, we want to look at basically, you know, what is the medical history? What are the kind of the risks like you would as, you know, with a conventional medical doctor, but also, you know, what are the uh, exposure risks? So did they grow up next to um, a cornfield where, um, Roundup has been sprayed on that Roundup ready corn, or did they grow up on a busy city street where they're breathing in exhaust and other chemicals? Um, also, there's generational chemical exposures. So, if there's been, you know, for multiple generations, family exposures to uh, certain things, you know, you can look up zip codes online um, in the United States and you can say, you know, are you near a EPA Superfund site that maybe wasn't an EPA Superfund site when that person was growing up and now it is, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, what is their drinking water? Are they using a reverse osmosis filter for that? So, you know, do they exercise a lot? And when they exercise, do they sweat easily? If someone doesn't sweat easily, they're not going to be detoxifying, even if they're only exposed to a little bit of chemicals. Whereas if you have somebody exercising uh, six days a week and then on their day off, they're still walking five miles and they're sweating very easily, that person is going to be potentially most likely less toxic than the person who doesn't sweat easily. So, you know, uh, we look at digestive health too. As a naturopathic doctor, we're always looking at the gut health and gut microbiome. Uh, the gut brain axis is going to inform your hormones. So, I mean, really, as long as the patient's willing, there's no stern, uh, no uh, stone left unturned. Uh, it's really up to their um, uh, usually the budget and their kind of education level are the limiting factors. Cause if they don't understand the rationale or the medical necessity for advanced functional lab diagnostics, they're going to say, okay, well, let's just stick with, stick with blood tests or, you know, let's, let's just look at, you know, just my testosterone and for men and women, you really need to look at all of your hormones. So, you know, that would be the, as far as like subjective analysis and then objective analysis would be physical exam in office, um, as well as, you know, if they're like before and after photos, if they said like, Hey, I I'm losing muscle mass and I used to weigh this amount and now I'm losing weight or I'm, Hey, I'm gaining weight, but I'm gaining it in the wrong places and it's not muscle, it's body fat. So body composition, uh, in my opinion, is more important than a body mass index or the number on a scale. And it's really how somebody feels in their body. If, you know, somebody wakes up and, you know, they get out of the shower and they're looking in the mirror and they're naked and they think, well, I feel pretty bad about how I look, um, barring, you know, an eating disorder or body dysmorphic disorders. And they actually have gained weight from when they are at a healthier weight for their body type and their person as an individual, then that's more of the concern for them and, and myself, then the number on the scale, just to set that straight. But then we look at lab testing. So conventional blood test is a great place to start. It's great if someone has a primary care doctor and specialist that may already be looking at their blood work uh, because it's a language that all doctors speak. You know, it's kind of like back in the day when everybody spoke you know, and, and wrote in Latin or something, right? So it's a language that the, the whole medical community understands. So you want to always have that in the mix. And then you would look at um, beyond basic lab tests, you would definitely want to look at thyroid, um, including potentially thyroid antibodies, uh, your, your free and, and total uh, T3 and T4. You want to also look at things like reverse T3 potentially, especially if they have a lot of fatigue, uh, as if that's never been done and these antibody tests have never been done. And then you also want to look at um, the, I kind of 
backing up a little bit, I kind of look at it as an analogy of a four legged chair, right? So if, if one leg of the chair is reproductive hormones, another leg of, in the diagnostics of the chair is, are things like fasting glucose, insulin, hemoglobin, A1C, C peptide in your blood. That would be your more kind of metabolic syndrome testing, diabetes, prediabetes. And that can disrupt things like your other hormones and testosterone and cause all kinds of problems, uh, oxidative damage to your cells. And then you also want to look at your thyroid as the third leg of the chair, as I was just talking about in more detail. And then you want to look at your adrenal hormones as the fourth leg of the chair. And that would be kind of the bare minimum testing. So if someone came to me and they said, you know what, Dr. Madeira, um, I, it's great you do all these other diagnostics and I don't really have any issues with bowel movements and my stools are well formed and I have pretty decent energy, but what is the bare minimum lab testing we can do? Typically it would be a serum blood testing that I just mentioned and, you know, pretty complete serum blood testing. So I have uh, for men, at least a, a free download on my website for Andropause, which is another name for low testosterone. And you can just go to my website, put your first name and email, and you'll get that free PDF download. It has all the lab testing, foods to eat, uh, workouts to do. And that can kind of be your template of how to live a healthy lifestyle. And, and a lot of it applies to women too. So, um, you would just need to add some female hormones like progesterone and total estrogens and, and, um, estradiol, et cetera, for women. But, uh, essentially in hormone testing and, and conventional blood testing, you can, you know, you can take conventional blood testing and there's ratios and there's, um, optimal ranges that we look at for all of those items. So we don't just, uh, function within, oh, uh, your hormones and your, um, white blood cells and your red blood cells and your hematocrits, et cetera, et cetera, are all within normal range, right? There's been a, a bunch of research coming out of um, NHANES research that you can look up online in PubMed if you or if you go to Google Scholar, if you want to use Google Scholar and put in NHANES research uh, testosterone study. And there's been multiple studies from the 80s up until about 2008, 2011, uh, going back in kind of like a longitudinal retrospective study of, you know, 10 to 15 years multiple times now. And we've seen the trajectory of testosterone in men age, roughly age 19 uh, to 70 drop significantly. And it's not an age related drop. Uh, we're seeing men, young men who are in their early twenties and late teens with lower and lower testosterone than their grandfathers. Have. Wow. So uh, traditionally, if you were talk to like a conventional endocrinologist and, and not all of them, but most of their training and specialty is in, um, medication management of diabetes because of this diabetes epidemic globally in developed countries, but, uh, especially, you know, we're talking about North America, so Canada and the U S. Um, and since I work in the U S that's going to kind of be my focus when I talk about statistics for the listeners, but essentially um, there's a major drop in testosterone. And if you go to your conventional MD endocrinologist, there may be in a major metropolitan area in the, in the U S maybe two to four out of all those endocrinologists specialize in something like testosterone therapy or um, their information may be outdated. So even ob guide for women, or a MD endocrinologist, it may just be somewhat outdated information because when they're in medical school, the textbooks that they're using are from mid 1970s. And for men, they're dosing testosterone once a month or every other week at very low dosages or using androgel. And it's just their standard of care is pretty outdated and it's not, um, it's not substantial enough dosages to make a difference for men who, who have truly low testosterone. So I just want to put that out there because if someone's listening to this and they're kind of thinking, well, let me get this covered by insurance and go to my conventional primary care. And then they can just kick me out to the, uh, refer me out to my, um, my, uh, endocrinologist in network of my insurance. That's not a bad idea. I, I always recommend people use your insurance benefits or, um, plan for what it can be covering. Uh, however, typically what I've seen is that 
hasn't gone well for a lot of people and they're not going to be as comprehensive because they're managed by insurance, even though they may want to be. So of course there's outliers in that story, but that's what I hear because I'm not going to see patients that got what they needed from their conventional doctors. Right. They're, yeah. That, they yeah. come to me after they've that's failed for them. So, you know, take what I'm saying or whatever anyone says uh, in podcasts and online with, uh, you know, kind of filter it with a little bit of, of your own skepticism and, and do your own research around it. However, this has been my experience for over a decade now of seeing patients um, and all, pretty much all my colleagues in, in functional and naturopathic medicine, because we don't see people that get well in the conventional medical system. So uh, essentially um, what, what people need to do is work with a practitioner, most likely like myself, you, you know, find someone ideally local, but if you can't find someone local, work with someone who you can work with virtually, um, make sure that you like and trust them. And of course that trust can take time, but, you know, look at, look at how they work with people. We offer free 15 to 30 minute discovery calls to kind of help people understand how we, how we do things. So, um, essentially my, I see my job as when someone essentially hires me, uh, and they're paying out of pocket with their hard earned money. Cause I'm not contracted with health insurance or as I call it, sick care insurance, cause it's not really helping them get healthy. Um, it's not like it covers a gym membership or a yoga membership, you know, that, that would be something different. Right. So, uh, essentially my job is to help that person feel as, as best and awesome as they can feel. And I know that sounds kind of like um, impossible maybe to some people or kind of vague, but if someone comes in and their symptom is, hey, I have a headache every week, I'm missing work, I'm fatigued, I haven't had sex with my significant other for X amount of months or years, um, I'm concerned about losing my job, I'm concerned about my relationship, I'm super stressed, please help me, this is my budget, We can, you can still get help, you know? It's not like you have to be a multimillionaire to get help from uh, functional medicine and naturopathic doctors. Uh, with that said, not all doctors are created equal. Not all, all of us are, you know, it's a very personal relationship. So not all of us are going to be the best person for that individual either. So uh, often what I hear, you know, your question is about diagnostics and evaluation is from a lot of patients that are either messaging me on Instagram or social media or talking to uh, myself or my assistant about, hey, I want to see about working with Dr. Madeira. What does that look like? Is that they haven't had a comprehensive diagnostic workup. They haven't been asked certain questions about their health and toxin exposure. And we can get into those details more. But really, it, you know, what's really important is that you work with somebody that is working hard for you. You know, you wouldn't hire someone to build your house if they're kind of like, okay, well, you know, this week we put up the frame and now we're on vacation and we're not going to, you know, we're not going to ask you what you really want here. We're just going to put this together and it's kind of going to be done, but maybe not. You, you would fire that person, right? So I, I think uh, a lot of people feel like they um, are beholden to practitioners and they stick with them too long. And especially if you're paying out of pocket, and I say this um, wholeheartedly, especially if you're paying out of pocket for that person and you're not getting the results you want, you go back to that person before you go and talk to anybody else and say, listen, this is why I came to see you. I don't feel like this is being addressed. Please address it. Otherwise, I need to go find somebody else. I, I thought you were going to help me. I'm getting frustrated and I need help. Don't do like passive aggressive things and like write bad Google reviews or like hurt their business. And, you know, we, usually clinics like mine and my colleagues are small businesses and um, they're not like a big hospital with a huge multi-million or billion dollar budget that you may be used to going to. So go direct, speak to that person and say, if, you know, if, if you can't help me on X, Y, and Z, uh, please refer me out to one to three people and I need to terminate care here and get my record sent to the other doctor. And there's nothing wrong with that. That that's um, that's like a kind 
a kind conversation to have and you can be kind and firm at the same time. So I, I typically find that a lot of us think that we're, you know, basically like need to, you know, I don't want to hurt their feelings or, you know, they've helped me for 10 years and they helped my whole family. Well, they're not helping you now. So, and, and that kind of goes to my next question. And, and this is all tied together, right? Because if your evaluation isn't correct, your treatment's going to be wrong. And if your treatment's wrong, you're not going to get well in the time period that you should be getting well. And you could be wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially. You could be wasting years to decades of your time in your life. And while we can make more money, and, and some people have different uh, mindsets around money, and that's kind of connected to their health, potentially. Um, essentially, we can't get time back unless you own a time machine somewhere in your garage or basement that we all would want to get access to, right? So time is our biggest asset. So if you're wasting time not getting well by either not seeking out a practitioner like my colleagues or myself, or not getting the lab testing you need from your primary care doctor because insurance won't pay for it. And th while they may understand that the, the rationale behind that lab testing, it's not going to be covered. And when you bill insurance for labs, it's 10 X more expensive at least than it would be if you did wholesale direct lab pricing with a clinic like myself, you'd be saving hundreds of dollars per lab test. So, you know, it, it really, uh, I really find this common pattern of people not getting a full evaluation and, and a full, full evaluation bit from the subjective questionnaires and subjective intake of somebody's kind of medical life history story. You know, we kind of want to know from basically from birth till the day they come into my clinic, what were the, what was the story? You know, if you could draw it out, what was the roadmap of what happened? When did you start feeling bad? not when you had a diagnosis, but when did you start having any symptom? Because that's most likely things were starting years before that. They could have started in utero. So we're going to talk about hormones and toxins. The exposures are in utero. Uh, the reason why a 20-something-year-old male or 20-something-year-old female has uh, all these hormone problems now and their hormones are super imbalanced more than their grandparents and their great-grandparents' generations and even their parents' generations, is all the exposures that those parents have had in their lifetime that were not potentially not detox. And then when the child is in Europe for roughly nine months and then born and then exposed to more things through breast milk and formulas, et cetera. So that's basically, you know, the first, you know, if, if a child is breastfed on average, you know, six months, you know, a little more than a year, their, their first exposures, they're already starting out at a deficit. So it's like uh, someone starting their life in severe debt that they may never be able to get out of um, financially. So similar from a health point of view. And with that, you know, if someone had the resources, we would look at those toxin uh, burdens, whole body burdens in their um, urine testing and, and blood testing as well um, to understand at a root level, root cause level, what are the true exposures that we can see in real time? And uh, are those exposures explaining the root cause of this person's chronic fatigue, uh, chronic symptoms, whether whatever those other symptoms are, low libido, et cetera, that maybe it's not going to get fixed just by testosterone therapy for, for a male or uh, for females, other hormone therapies, which may include testosterone, but at a very low dose, you know, uh, estrogen and progesterone, bioidentical only. Um, you know, typically if someone's not improving with hormone replacement therapies, uh, includes thyroid, then there's some kind of mitochondrial uh, dysfunction or disease and breakdown at, multi at all the cells levels. So, you know, if someone wants to prevent dementia, heart disease, you know, stroke, uh, et cetera, uh, cancers, or if they've already had cancer and they want to prevent potentially a reoccurrence, of course, there's no promises in medicine anywhere. Uh, however, if there's toxins on board, you know, we're talking about Roundup and we'll talk about other things in a second. Uh, essentially, um, if we don't deal with those root causes, then you're basically, it's like putting 
duct tape over parts of your cars as they're falling off your car. You know, it's like you got to go get that car completely looked at, the body fixed. You can't just keep duct taping it up and then the check engine light comes on and you put more tape over that and you keep driving it. Um, it, The reason why I use the car analogy in the United States, most people drive cars and most people that I know treat their cars better than they treat their own bodies. You know, they're getting oil change when they need to. They're getting air in the tires when they need to. They're getting tune-ups when they need to, uh, but they're never, they're not doing that two to four times a year for their own body. And then they're kind of like, why does this cost so much? Well, you haven't done anything for your health for four years. And now you need a full workup and to catch up to the fact that you've treated your body like a trash can and driven it into the ground because that's what everybody in your community does and has been conditioned to do. It's not necessarily that person's fault so to speak. However, they're the one doing it to themselves, you know? So with this comes a certain amount of personal responsibility of saying, okay, I don't know what I don't know. I'm going to be teachable. I'm going to order the lab test that this doctor or whatever doctor I'm working with recommends. And maybe they need to be spaced out over two years because, or four years, because that person has some financial restrictions. Sure. Fine. But, um, I think a lot of people, you know, we're all, all of us are conditioned to say, Hey, you know, uh, give me a pill or a couple of medications and let's call it good. And I should just feel better because that's what the pharmaceutical commercials tell us since we're born in this country, because this is one of the few countries in the world where they can feed us that, that, um, propaganda and it's, it's failing, you know, chronic illness is going to bankrupt the United States. Uh, within the next two decades alone, if, and you could just, we could just list off some big ones, you know, autism, uh, affecting boys more than girls, uh, diabetes, uh, metabolic illness beyond diabetes affecting nine out of 10 adults in the United States, uh, autoimmune diseases in the rise in both men and women, you know, more men and are, have autoimmune disease today than they did 10 to 12 years ago when I was doing clinical rounds in naturopathic medical school. So et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And typically when someone has one of those things, they're more likely to have more illness, uh, more likely higher risk for cancers and cardiovascular disease. And that's why you're going to see more and more young people uh, have more and more health problems and obesity. And there's no way that that person can uh, essentially lead a healthy life and it really have a fighting chance at having, you know, we say like optimal health, but you know, all you have to do is look at the pictures from the seventies and early eighties and the sixties of people. Uh, and then the same, you know, location and maybe a photograph today to understand what we're looking at here. So, you know, we can kind of go into that bigger kind of national point of view, but it, it really is the in developed countries that it really is a global uh, health world, public health issue that it's becoming a public health issue and typically public health issues for all like infectious diseases, right? Like we saw over the last two and a half plus years here now. So, but going back to your question, you got to get the minimum, uh, serum blood diagnostics, ideally first thing in the morning, if you're testing for hormones, you need an AM cortisol as well for your a uh, total cortisol level before 9 a.m. So you want to get to the lab right when they open. You want to have that scheduled appointment. Uh, you can bill it to your insurance if it covers it. If not, do wholesale direct lab pricing, and then you get a huge discount. You can use your HSA card for that. And then you have your your blood test, and you don't have to get that done every month. You know, Maybe you'll get it done in three months or a month and a half again, and just things are out of alignment, um, out, of, out of optimal range that that practitioner is working on improving. So I think a lot of, a lot of education and pre-education is needed, you know, from things like this, like a podcast conversation with someone like you to help people understand, you know what, I have to go outside conventional medicine if I want to have a chance at optimal health, unless for, you know, for some lucky reason you have a functional medicine nurse practitioner MD that is taking all the insurance under the sun and just kind of eating crow and basically like offering that community service. Um, and God bless them if they are, because it's needed. I mean, we need, 
this medicine everywhere. This should, in my opinion, be the first line of care and be taught in, you know, K through 12 in every public school in the U.S. and in the world to help people to understand from day one, how do I take care of myself? How do I cook for myself? You know, how do I create an exercise plan for myself based on how my body works, not based on how some person was researched in the 70s and 80s and 90s for how we should be exercising? And, you know, how should I sleep? And there's all these mostly relatively affordable genetic tests that people can do now. They'll tell them like, hey, are you a sprinter? You know, are you a long distance runner? Should you be doing that sport that all your friends are doing that basically involves long distance running? You know, should be should you be running marathons in your adulthood? Because uh, not everybody has the um, the phenotype, the the genetics being expressed that they inherited from their parents to put them in that that um, type of exercise, and that can cause hormone deficiencies, et cetera. So, um, I, I think that the education and the pre education needed is um, endless. And the um, marketing coming out of the bigger organizations that are both um, from the at the federal level as well as the pharmaceutical companies confuse the general public tremendously around basic things like nutrition, hormone health, um, and it, it's it's hard. It's hard for people to kind of get real factual information to understand how to keep themselves and their families healthy because um, you're not going to get it from those kind of more conventional outlets. Uh, they're there to make sure that you're staying alive. You know, they're there to make sure if you, you know, you're hiking a huge mountain like Mount Rainier in Seattle and you fracture both femurs and you get airlifted in a helicopter off the mountain that they're going to save your life at the trauma center. That's where they shine. They are not shining with somebody with, you know, type two diabetes, um, and obesity. Uh, they're just not, and they know it. I mean, the most, most, uh, conventional doctors are kind of like, yeah, we got medications and you need, all doctors will say you need to work on your lifestyle, you know? So that's where all that starts beyond toxins. But yeah, I went on and on there for a while, but, um, if people are not getting correct diagnostics, then they're not going to get the correct treatment and they're not going to get well. And you have, if you're not getting well and you're working right now with a practitioner, no matter what type you need to go back to the drawing board, uh, fill out new questionnaires or different questionnaires, uh, get more subjective information to that practitioner and potentially most likely more objective information. Um, sometimes it can all be through, uh, interviewing if the person's listening well enough to what you're saying and you can tell them, Hey, these are all my symptoms. They happen at this time. They happen every day or week at this time after this happens. And maybe that practitioner is good enough where, or has enough clinical experience where they've seen that so many times they can say, okay, most likely 99% or 90% chance. This is what you're dealing with. If you can't afford the lab testing, let's treat you. If you don't get better in one to two months, let's do the lab test, you know? So you don't always have to spend like two, $2,000 or a thousand dollars on this, these expensive, um, very big, um, out of pocket lab tests. With that said, oftentimes those are needed eventually, um, unless somebody is a super easy, um, clinical case, you know, I'm talking like chronic illness cases here. That's typically what I see. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. And that's for everybody listening or watching. I want to thank you, doc, because everything is relevant. Everything you said is very relevant to that evaluation process. It is true that it's not just, you know, you, we run this test, we look at the number, we give you the pill and you're good to go. This is the duct tape that you're talking about. And unfortunately, that has been practiced by many providers, not even their fault, but that's the type of training that some doctors, providers uh, within the standard of care are practicing. And we, on the patient side, we become victims of something that is really nobody's fault, but somebody who maybe created uh, uh, a system that is flawed 
even with good intentions they may they may not have intended that but it's happening so reversing back to that one moment that is important for all of us where we finally decide that we're going to see somebody and say this is ridiculous i should already be doing better and i tried so many things and it's been some time and i'm a good guy and i want to get better i'm ready right so they they meet with you now for everybody listening and watching look what happens on the provider side Dr. Madeira mentioned, and by the way, he's not only seeing people in uh, in person in his clinic, but also consulting as long as you're within the United States as of right now, right, right, Doc, then you can you can consult remotely as well, schedule that 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 phone call or Zoom call with him. So look what happens. He mentioned listening to your story, listening what happens, listening to the patterns that you are experiencing. And based on that, he might be able to see that the pattern was seen in a patient before. I think that's very valuable because now we are talking about something that maybe the lab will not tell me. Another thing we are talking about is which labs and what evaluation is even relevant here. And when we talk about hormone imbalance, because we are talking about a systemic issue, it's not going to be as simple because there is a reason for something to happen. So if we have a reason, now we have to dig a little bit deeper, sometimes two, three layers deeper. We need to look at the four, like you mentioned, the, 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 the four pillars, or you mentioned the four legs of that stool, and evaluate to have a comprehensive picture and enough information to be able to make some conclusions. And then, obviously, and I'm, I'm sure that the recommendations are going to be based on what you find. At the same time, I have a question for you about common denominator here. There are some things that are going to be fully customized, I'm sure, in a functional medicine setting for what your situation needs. And there is also going to be a parallel line of things that are just in general say, hey, these are my recommendations. For example, one of them you mentioned, avoid toxins. And you also mentioned in one of the videos that I just saw recently, by recently, I mean yesterday, sleep how important is good quality sleep so let's talk about the things that are non-dependent on the testing but kind of like a common denominator in patient ca uh, patient care yeah those are great questions and i think um a lot a lot of kind of my mission and <clears throat> a lot of my colleagues mission is you know not necessarily just to keep our clinics full with patients of course as a business you want to um stay uh, viable but um, essentially offer people free information through things like this, like podcasts, you know, free downloads from my website, uh, the podcast I've already done, 64 episodes that you can listen to, the Dr. Madeira show, uh, but free information so that maybe somebody that's, you know, ha is a parent and has like teenagers right now or young kids, you can start now with them. Or if you're, even if you're an adult yourself and you're thinking, you know, I don't really have chronic symptoms, but I, I could use a little bit of a boost, right? Like I could use more energy. Um, maybe you have vague symptoms that don't make sense to you or your MD and they're not seeing them as a pathology yet, like dry skin, um, et cetera. And maybe it's as simple as like, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> going in to, um, online to environmentalworkinggroup.org and uh, ewg.org and looking at their free databases they have. So typically I recommend this for men and women. It may apply more to women because women are using uh, more cosmetics and, and makeup and things. But as, as men, a lot of men are using things that are pretty toxic like spray deodorants, their aerosols. Um, they're not just toxic to you, but they're toxic to anybody that you live with. Um, you know, colognes and perfumes for women that are toxic. Um, so those are typically all um, estrogenic chemicals or uh, basically endocrine disrupting chemicals. And they've been researched by the NIH. They've been researched by people that, you know, for years and decades have PhDs and multiple uh, prac um, not practitioners, but scientists at different levels, government agencies, uh, university levels, et cetera. So you can um, look up on the environmental working group. You can check things like your tap water by your zip code if you have city water. Uh, you should get your well water tested if you're not in city water. You can go to mytapscore.com. You can buy uh, one of those three 
uh, kits because the regular uh, water testing is not going to test all those things. And you can pick the one that you seem uh, appropriate based on where you live and potential exposures to that well water um, or his historically exposures. So you want to test that. Um, oftentimes what I hear from patients as far as water quality is, hey, it, my water is potable. I have uh, city or well water. It passed the conventional water testing. And I usually say, okay, well, what, what did they find? Oh, they found trace amounts of this heavy metal arsenic. They found trace amounts of this. Um, and it's like, well, do you know, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so that that arsenic can uh, weaken your pancreas and contribute to things like diabetes? Hmm. Um, I would no never think that's, that's something to, to pay attention to. Yeah. So, and there's research on this too. And um, Dr. Joe Prezorno, who's an ND and one of the founders of Bastyr University, um, has done a lot of presentations at conferences all over the United States and the world about stuff like this. And we'll get to kind of detox practices in a little bit. But essentially, you want to make your home and your lifestyle as healthy as possible. Obviously, we can't all live in a bubble. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna suddenly, you know, put a bubble around your house and like live in this kind of controlled climate or um, filter out everything. But with that said, you know, you probably want to get a good air filter. Um, there are a bunch you can look up online and do your own research around reviews. Um, air doctor is a great company. I don't have any affiliation with that company, but you can probably find discount codes online for air doctor, air filters based on the square footage of which room you're putting it in. And it's a portable air filter. So you want to filter the air in your bedroom. You want to buy a mattress that is non-toxic. Um, if you are not eating organic, then start buying organic and growing your own vegetables. If you can, if you're in a place where you can, um, I, I have, um, when I was younger, worked on an organic vegetable farm in my hometown of Vermont. Um, I have friends that have vegetable farms that are organic. Um, I've interviewed them, one of them on my podcast. But uh, there's a lot of information on ewg.org on foods that you should definitely eat organic. So if you don't already know about those, there's the Dirty Dozen. So avoid mm -hmm. the Dirty Dozen. And then in the Clean 15, if you're on a budget, which most of us are right now with all the inflation is um, you want to make, you can eat those conventional, but of course still wash everything that you get, whether it's organic or not. And then you can shop the perimeter of the grocery store. So avoid the middle, avoid all pa packaged foods. If it, if it doesn't rot um, and break down eventually, whether it's meats or dairy products, et cetera, then don't buy it. So uh, fruits and vegetables, if you digest them, and then you want to, you know, ideally have some animal protein. Um, if you're vegan or vegetarian, I would recommend eating at least two servings of fish and um, probably taking, if you can stretch your belief system around this, beef liver capsules every day. So like ancestral supplements, you can take their beef liver capsules. Again, I have no affiliation with ancestral supplements. Um, I don't know the owners or anything. I'm not here to promote them. <clears throat> But that's essentially nature's multivitamin. If you're working with a nutritionist, naturopathic doctor, functional medicine practitioner, you can just ask them, hey, do you, what do you think is, would this be a good idea for me to take this? I heard about it on a podcast. You never want to just take a supplement or an herb or anything from listening to a podcast. I've had patients who did that and it didn't work for them, even, at work, even though it worked for that person on that podcast. So there's individualized variations in these things. So you want to basically filter water, filter your air, um, and filter your food, right? So mm -hmm. uh, air, water, food, um, as clean as possible, and you want to sweat. So if you want to get an infrared sauna, you can get uh, sunlight and sauna or a clear light sauna by Jacuzzi if you have the funds for that and you have the room in your house. If you're kind of like, you know what, I don't really have room for that, you can look at um, therosage.com. Uh, has portable saunas that collapse into a bag that are head out saunas. And there's quite a bit of research on the head out sauna set up as well in Fred sauna and you plug it into the wall when you're not using it, you put it back in its bag that it comes in and you can also travel with that. So if you're like super, you know, um, mobile and, you know, traveling all over the country or something and living in different places for weeks or months at a time, you can get that Therisage sauna because you're going to be exposed to more things while you're traveling in the airplane 
Um, you're going to be exposed to toxins in the airplane. You're going to be exposed to um, different toxins and in going into different hotels like mold potentially, et cetera. So, you know, basically if you can create the cleanest uh, diet and, and then have a good exercise plan, you may want to hire a personal trainer. I'm not a personal trainer. Um, I've had patients that are personal trainers. I have friends that are personal trainers. So, you know, you can, um, I, I have, you know, several I could recommend to people, but basically find someone local, ideally that you can work with and meet with at least two to three times a week and then do exercises on your own, uh, based on, you know, your history of, uh, physical musculoskeletal pain, um, your goals, you know, essentially you want to be keeping your bone mineral density in your body, um, muscle mass, uh, percentage as high as you age. So that's one of the biggest concerns for longevity. You don't want to have a fracture um, in for your hip or something like that as you age, if you fall and you want to have enough muscle mass in your lower body. A lot of people are focused on like beach bodies, right? They have, you know, these super thin kind of um, ostrich legs and their upper body looks like they can lift up a fire truck, you know? So you want to flip that around, you know, focus on the lower body more, still work the upper body, um, chill out on the cardio because cardio is going to, as you age, is going to increase cortisol and deplete your, um, unless you're training for something in particular, deplete your other um, hormones that are more anabolic, which are uh, DHEA and testosterone for men and women. And all your other reproductive hormones will fall in line with those low numbers. So if you can create a lifestyle like this, that is mostly healthy, and then as you mentioned, sleep. So you need your bedroom to be cool, dark, and quiet. If your bedroom's not cool, dark, and quiet right now, you can start there. Um, put the air filter in there. You can put it on night mode if you get like the Air Doctor air filter. Um, make sure your mattress is not making you too hot or hurting your back or anything like that. Um, because then you could be wasting money going to like a physical therapist or a chiropractor for something that your mattress is causing. Um and, and create in and, and every parameter of your life, you have to basically audit your life and say, okay, roughly seven to eight hours, you should be sleeping every night. If you're not asleep, not in bedtime, but if you're not, you know, marking your sleep and um, tracking your sleep, start doing that right away. You don't need a fancy, a fancy device. You can download an app, you know, like sleep timer or something like that, that that's free. And you can just start tracking your sleep right now. If you need to buy like chili sleep pad or chili pillow or chili blanket and chili sleep.com, you can do that. Um, and that will help decrease your body temperature, especially for people in hotter climates. You know, if you're in the Southern, you know, third or eighth of the United States, um, you know, basically Southern California, Florida, um, the central and deep South, if you're in those kind of more hot climates, then you're going to need ways beyond the expensive air conditioning bill to lower the temperature in your bedroom. Ideal actual temperature, like ambient air temperature in the bedroom should be around 65 to 67, maybe 68 degrees is ideal for sleep hygiene. Uh, if you need blackout curtains or you can get an eye mask, uh, there are eye masks you can buy on Amazon or other companies. And then you can get um, blue light blocking glasses. I think I have mine around here somewhere. If you have to, uh, for some reason, for your work, or you, like me, you work for yourself and you're responding to a couple things late at night, not a good idea. But if you are, uh, wear blue light blocking glasses, dim over, turn off overhead lights. You want to have a routine about three hours before you're going to go to bed, allowing you seven and a half hours, you know, roughly of optimal sleep. So uh, one to three hours, create a dark, cool environment in your bedroom, in your house, only overhead lights, maybe read a book instead of watching a movie right before bed. Don't be on social media. Have Get your phone and computers and TV out of your bedroom. So no screen time, at least one hour, ideally three hours before bed. Nobody does this. So if you're doing it already, you know, uh, kudos to you. Um, but it's, it's a goal to aim for. So if you're not already doing all those things, um, maybe before investing in a functional medicine practitioner, try to do at least 20% of those things I just mentioned. And, and if you know, kind of like, Hey, I already know, I don't feel rested when I wake up. I already know I need to work on sleep and 
already know I'm getting maybe like five to six hours of sleep every night. And I'm going to bed at midnight, waking up at 5 a.m. You're probably getting less than five hours of sleep because the time you're in bed, typically about 90% of that time, you're actually asleep, hmm. maybe less if you're really not a good sleeper. And then for men and women, if if you have a significant other that says you're snoring or you stop breathing at night um, or you have other sleep issues, you know, restless legs and stuff like that, you need to go get a 24 hour sleep study with a, um, a conventional MD sleep doctor, typically find someone in that work with your insurance because it's going to be a big bill. Um, if it's not covered by insurance, you want to make sure that is definitely covered by insurance. If you need a referral from a primary care doctor to get that referral, if it needs to be that way to get covered. But a lot of people have sleep apnea today and not all these people are obese. Um, there's young, mostly healthy people with sleep apnea for various reasons. Some of them are environmental. Um, some of them are other problems going on with their airway, the way that their airway is kind of designed. Um, if, if, it's not a, a sleep issue that a sleep doctor can fix through prescriptions or a CPAP machine or both. Um, then it's potentially something you need to go see a biological dentist and get your bite analyzed um, and get your mouth analyzed. And, and you may need some kind of um, either uh, intervention in that way through a, bite, a different kind of bite guard or a, a device you put in your mouth while you're sleeping to prevent your tongue in your palate from collapsing while you're sleeping. So those are things that can cause severe hormone deficiencies. They can cause chronic fatigue. They can cause a uh, low oxygen saturation. Another good thing to have at home is you can just go on Amazon. You can buy a pulse oximeter reader for about $25. And you know, once a week, even if you don't have any breathing problems or if you're feeling tired in the morning, check your pulse oximeter reading. You don't have to go to the doctor to do that. If it's below 94% every morning, then there's an issue and you need to go get that assessed by your primary care doctor and probably uh, check out if you have sleep apnea. So it could be asthma too. It could be other things, but oftentimes what we see uh, across the board, like I mentioned before, is people are not, they don't have the data. So when they go into their primary care doctor, because they don't have data, they say, how do you feel? And they're like, I don't feel good, but I don't know why. Okay. Well, your vitals are fine. Your conventional lab tests are fine. See you in one to two years or never. And then that person, if you have sleep apnea, it's a serious issue. You could die in your sleep. Um, you could die very young in your sleep. It's a life and death uh, situation. So you need to get treated. You need to wear your C CPAP machine. You can't, most of the time, you cannot have testosterone therapy as a male or a female or any hormone therapies until uh, for reproductive hormones replacement until you get your uh, sleep apnea treated. If you have a CPAP on board, you can get testosterone therapy as a male or female uh, biomedical hormones, but I don't typically ever give testosterone to somebody who has like, oh, I've been snoring or uh, there's some, all these signs of uh, sleep apnea and sleep apnea is this kind of like silent epidemic, if you will, that barely anybody's talking about. Um, but it, it's a huge problem. And a lot of people are not going to the links to get it addressed. There's also other sleep disorders. So if you're not sleeping, nothing else matters. You're not going to be able to work out and recovery from your work, recover from those workouts the way you want to. You're not going to be able to put on uh, bone um, mass and keep bone mass optimal as you age. After age 30, it drops. Um, after age 30, all your hormones drop. After age 30, everything drops, right? So um, some people say 25. So depending on how sick that person is, um, and then muscle mass is a huge issue. So if you're not digesting your protein and eating enough protein based on how much you're working out, if you're sleeping poorly, all that other stuff is going to go completely down the toilet. So, you know, I know kind of like part of my focus is environmental medicine and hormones. Uh, these things are all informed by our lifestyle. So um, your ability to recharge and recover, your ability to have healthy brain function, you know, you should not be driving if you're sleeping less than six hours a night, because technically your your brain capacity is on par with a drunk person. So a lot of car accidents happen for people who have sleep deprivation. Uh, when I was in medical school, I experienced that quite a bit, uh, where I was completely sleep deprived and should not have been driving. And and it's in in that community, just like I said, in probably a lot of other people's community, if you're a shift worker or something your sleep's probably screwed up and all your hormones. I've seen that with patients. 
you uh, essentially that whole community normalizes how screwed up everything is for them. And it's just like, suck it up and deal with it. Right. Military firemen, first, first responders, ER doctors, uh, con other conventional doctors and specialists on call, nurses working night shift, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So it's just par for the course. So you have to try to be as healthy as you can within uh, the parameters of the career you've chosen for yourself and then create very strict boundaries around that. So it may look like, okay, I'm going to buy blackout curtains. I'm going to have an eye mask. I'm going to create my, I'm going to buy like a AC unit that is a wall mount electric AC unit just for that bedroom, turn off the central air AC and keep my bedroom as cool as possible. Save a little bit of chunk of change there. Just focus on the sleep first and then focus on like, okay, organic food and then focus on, okay, I'm going to get a gym membership and start working out. Cause if you're chronically fatigued and your sleep is completely, you know, off the rails, you can't do any of that other stuff. You don't have energy to cook. You don't have energy to work out. You do a workout, you're going to be exhausted forever. So a lot of people think they're like superheroes because they can function at five hours of sleep. Go read um, Dr. Um, what's his name? He's a neuroscientist, the sleep doctor out of Berkeley now. Uh, go read his book, um, Why We Sleep. And it, I think he's doing a second edition edit on it uh, over the next couple of years. He has his own podcast. He's been on Joe Rogan. He's been on other podcasts. Um, but go read, uh, go read that book, why we sleep and, um, you will understand or listen to an audible or something. You'll understand how important this is. I mean, you can, you can prevent yourself from getting dementia just by improving your sleep. So while my focus is hormones, at, you know, in my training as a naturopathic physician, it's, we're really big on preventing diseases, you know, increasing longevity, increasing health span. So if someone's like, Hey, you know, I, I understand that my life expectancy based on my genetics may not be 115 years old, but for the years that I am alive, I want to be able to do all the things I like doing, play with my grandkids, you know, see my kids graduate from college. I want to be able to walk into my last days and, you know, ride my bike or, you know, go play golf with my friends and not be bedridden or in a, have a walker or a wheelchair then you need to focus on all the things I've been talking about right now, whether you work with any doctor or not. And if you do, you probably save potentially tens of hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars on medical bills. Medical bills in the United States are one of the main reasons why people foreclose on their homes and lose their houses. Uh, medical bills will uh, bankrupt families. So, and I'm talking about conventional medicine. So, you know, if you have a heart attack or stroke or you have to be in the hospital, for multiple surgeries and that's not covered completely by your insurance. Usually it's nothing's all hundred percent covered by insurance usually ever. So, you know, you need to focus on like investing in your health as you would invest in the college fund for your kids, as you would invest in keeping your car running, uh, focus on prevention, prevention, prevention is an ounce of cure. So the more you focus there, the less supplements you need to take, the less medications you need, uh, the less money and time you spend with doctors like myself. And I'm completely reverse selling myself right now. So, um, you know, that's the purpose of doing podcasts like this, right? Is if you can get information like this, that's pretty generic. And then you go to a personal trainer, you go to uh, an MD and that knows you and knows your lab work that's covered by insurance. And you say, you know what? Um, so and so, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Doctor, nurse practitioner, I need a DEXA scan. How do we get that covered by insurance? I'm concerned about bone mineral, mineral density. Both my parents have osteoporosis. Um, you know, I'm concerned about my cardiovascular health. What else can we look at be, besides a conventional lipid panel? And they say, like, nothing. Then you go and do more work with a doctor like myself. But if you can push them because now you're educated and you need to advocate for your own health within the conventional medical system, then you can potentially still get a lot of the things that you may need from that system. And all practitioners, doesn't matter if they're in the hospital, private practice, what have you, they went into medicine because they want to help people. It doesn't matter if their bedside manner is great or poor. They had a heart at one point and a soul that said, I want to do this because something happened to someone I know or myself that, that didn't go well, and I want to help other people get well and stay well. So while their toolbox is different than mine, potentially, they still 
uh, joined that profession and went through all that schooling and sacrificed all their time to get where they are to help you. So if you reach out to them and say, listen, I understand that you're kind of bound by insurance, but how far can we go with diagnostics? You know, th this is my family history. Why haven't we looked at genetics for cardiovascular disease and stroke? Why are we only using statin medication? What else can you do? And gently push them without insulting their intelligence because, you know, typically people in those positions um, like to not be, you know, we don't want to be insulted ever at anybody, but uh, typically doctors don't like it when patients come back to them and like, you idiot, why didn't you do this test? So you got to tread lightly, but ask them for the help first and then exhaust all resources there. And then you can reach out to practitioners like myself, um, or if you want to, you can do it simultaneously, but you have to, you know, advocate for yourself here. You have to be your own kind of health coach and you say, know. yeah, like what, what, you're, what you're saying yeah. is so important. And I want to make sure that our viewers and listening listeners are really paying attention to this because we on the receiving end, sometimes we blame the system. So we blame the provider, but really it's you watching. It's you as a patient, you as a provider as well, because sometimes you are sitting in that patient's seat with your family member. You are in control. You can gently push people towards your own health. You can control the outcomes by controlling the resources that are incoming to you. Podcasts like today, what Dr. Madeira is uh, t talking about is not only certain things that increase your testosterone levels naturally, but also what can we do to prevent the decrease? How can we have the overall health, which allows us for the environment to have optimal hormone uh, function and levels? And then based on your labs, you may have some very specific recommendations for you, but definitely control, get the in um get the input of information as good as possible ask the right questions push gently push your healthcare providers to make sure that you have the outcomes that you need and really pay attention to what dr madeira said you are in control you should be your own patient advocate because it's so easy to forget about this and then blame somebody else sometimes the person that you can blame is the person in the mirror. So now I wanted to ask you before we go, Dr. Madeira, because that's important. And for you, if you, because you just heard a load of information, this was so information rich, not only what to do to be healthy, but also, you know, different resources. So reverse, rewind if you need, and then listen to it one more time or watch it one more time. Well, last question that I have for you before we go is if there is anything that you forgot to mention in terms of bullet points, like the common denominator, okay, you mentioned workouts, you mentioned sleep, you mentioned proper diet, which I know it needs to be customized a little bit. If there is another bullet point you would like to give people for increasing testosterone naturally, put that uh, in before you, you tell people. And a very important one, where can people find you, how they can connect with you? Yeah, that's a great, great question. I, I think that... Um as far as like maybe without getting too far into the weeds again, um, a couple of bullet points are uh, making sure that you're getting enough sunshine. Um, don't get burned and kind of understand your um, own limits there based on your skin tone. But um, more sunshine, people are sun phobic, um, you know, and avoid going down the list of toxins, you know, like sunscreen is a major toxin. Um, so you can, check out the work of um, Dr. Shana Swan. She's a PhD. She was on the Joe Rogan podcast last April. Um, so you can check out her episode in her book uh, called Countdown about toxins that affect uh, boys and men and, and their hormones from in utero and in early life. Um, and it's part of the kind of infertility epidemic for, for uh, men today. Um, as well as check out, check out um, Anthony J, uh, PhD. He was on my podcast, uh, episode 64. Um, so his last name is J-A-Y, like Blue Jay. And um, <clears throat> he's a PhD biochemist. And he has a book called Esther Generation that came out quite a while ago now. Um, and he has a, a pretty active YouTube channel, I, I believe, as well. So uh, really kind of arming yourself with these facts and help yourself and your family understand. So even if you're, you know, you're female and you have brothers, you have a dad, right? So you have men in your life. And even if you're, um, 
have, you know, no siblings and you're, you know, maybe you're older and your parents aren't alive. I'm sure you have men in your life or even as a female understanding like, okay, these things affect your hormones significantly as well. So prevention, again, um, limiting exposure and detoxifying. So uh, big on the sauna therapy, uh, big on exercise and, and the sleep. So you can start there. Um, you can go through your foods. Eventually you can kind of audit your kitchen, your house, but you know, also I think a takeaway to have is like, we can't fear our environment. Um, that can also create illness in our body. So you don't want to create like a, um, eating disorder or a food phobia because you know, you're out with friends and you're having a good time. You're kind of like, well, I can't eat any of this because I don't know if it's organic or I have, you know, all these food intolerances. I mean, if you have like um, anaphylactic shock, obviously don't eat, you know, the peanuts or the shellfish, like don't risk your life. But what I'm saying is, you know, still enjoy life because enjoying life and bringing joy into your life while simultaneously doing healthy things is how you're going to increase your health from a psychological point of view all the way to physical. So I think that's a big bullet point that I didn't mention. I think we get kind of um, like some people are kind of like Nazis about this stuff, for lack of a better word, about just like, oh, I have to be so strict. And like, I didn't sleep eight hours last night and shame on me. And they kind of like pull in this kind of self berating attitude. And I think all of us just have to let that go. Try to 80% of the time, do your best. 20% of the time, just let it all go and, you know, have fun and enjoy your life. Because if you're not enjoying life, then what is the point of being super healthy? So, you know, it's like, what's the point of all this? So the, and then the other things about how, how you can find me, um, you can go to my website, apollohealthclinic.com. Uh, my podcast is on all the um, platforms for um, audio podcasts, you know, Spotify, iTunes, et cetera. Um, it's not on YouTube and it's called the Dr. Madeira show. So Madeira is spelled like Madeira wine. Um, and you can check it out there if you want to, if you like listening to podcasts or want to send podcasts to your friends or family in your life that you think will like it. Um, also Instagram, uh, Dr. Dr. Sam Madeira is my handle. So if you're on Instagram or social media, um, you can check us out there. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And, you know, we have the free resources on the website too. That I was talking about the Anthropause download. There's a perimenopause free download information sheet and then a Hashimoto's free download information sheet. So you can download all those too. And thank you. That's it. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching as well. Definitely, whether you're a provider or a potential patient's client, definitely connect with uh, Dr. Sam Madeira. Lots of resources. I'm sure you may have some questions. Comment below if you have questions. Share this video with people who you know are looking for ways to increase testosterone naturally. Dr. Madeira, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And you guys remember what Dr. Madeira said. Enjoy life.